as Elder Neil A. Maxwell taught. To those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, it is clear that the Father and the Son are giving away the secrets of the universe. Nothing opens the heavens quite like the combination of increased purity, exact obedience, earnest seeking, daily feasting on the words of Christ in the Book of Mormon, and regular time committed to temple and family history work. Well, to be sure, there may be times when you feel as though the heavens are closed. But I promise that as you continue to be obedient, expressing gratitude for every blessing the Lord gives you, and as you patiently honor the Lord's timetable, you will be given the knowledge and understanding you seek. Every blessing the Lord has for you, even miracles, will follow. That is what personal revelation will do for you. We are grateful to President Eyring and President Oaks for their inspired messages and to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir for the beautiful music they have provided this Easter morning. What a glorious privilege it has been to celebrate Easter with you on this Sunday of General Conference. Nothing could be more fitting than to commemorate the most important event that ever occurred on this earth by worshiping the most important being who ever walked this earth. In this, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we worship him who commenced his infinite atonement in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was willing to suffer for the sins and weaknesses of each of us, which suffering caused him to bleed at every pore. He was crucified on Calvary's cross and rose the third day as the first resurrected being of our Heavenly Father's children. I love him and testify that he lives. It is he who leads and guides his Church. Without our Redeemer's infinite atonement, not one of us would have hope of ever returning to our Heavenly Father. Without his resurrection, death would be the end. Our Savior's atonement made eternal life a possibility and immortality a reality for all. It is because of his transcendent mission and the peace he grants his followers. With Moroni, I exhort you on this Easter Sabbath to come unto Christ and lay hold upon every good gift beginning with the gift of the Holy Ghost, which gift can and will change your life. We are followers of Jesus Christ. The most important truth the Holy Ghost will ever witness to you is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He lives. He is our advocate with the Father, our exemplar, and our Redeemer. On this Easter Sunday, we commemorate his atoning sacrifice, his literal resurrection, and his divinity. This is his Church, restored through the Prophet Joseph Smith. I so testify with my expression of love for each of you. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our Savior and Redeemer Jesus Christ will perform some of his mightiest works between now and when he comes again. We will see miraculous indications that God the Father and his Son Jesus Christ preside over this Church in majesty and glory. But in coming days it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, and comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost.
I am optimistic about the future. It will be filled with opportunities for each of us to progress, contribute, and take the gospel to every corner of the earth. But I am also not naive about the days ahead. We live in a world that is complex and increasingly contentious. The constant availability of social media and a 24-hour news cycle bombard us with relentless messages. If we are to have any hope of sifting through the myriad of voices and the philosophies of men that attack truth, we must learn to receive revelation. We experience what the Prophet Joseph Smith knew when he taught, by union of feeling, we obtain power with God. because I know that good inspiration is based upon good information. One of the things the Spirit has repeatedly impressed upon my mind since my new calling as president of the Church is how willing the Lord is to reveal His mind and will. The privilege of receiving revelation is one of the greatest gifts of God to His children. Through the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, the Lord will assist us in all our righteous pursuits. I remember in an operating room, I have stood over a patient, unsure how to perform an unprecedented procedure, and experienced the Holy Ghost diagramming the technique in my mind. In like manner, what will your seeking open for you? What wisdom do you lack? What do you feel an urgent need to know or understand? Follow the example of the Prophet Joseph. Find a quiet place where you can regularly go. Humble yourself before God. Pour out your heart to your Heavenly Father. Turn to Him for answers and for comfort. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ about your concerns, your fears, your weaknesses. Yes, the very longings of your heart. And then listen. Write the thoughts that come to your mind. Record your feelings and follow through with actions that you are prompted to take. As you repeat this process day after day, month after month, year after year, you will grow into the principle of revelation. You don't have to wonder about what is true. You do not have to wonder whom you can safely trust. Through personal revelation, you can receive your own witness that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God, that Joseph Smith is a prophet of this dispensation, and that this is the Lord's Church. Regardless of what others may say or do, no one can ever take away a witness born to your heart and mind about what is true. that my wife Wendy and I felt comfort late on January 2nd, 2018, when we were awakened by a phone call telling us that President Thomas S. Monson had stepped through the veil. 
How we miss President Monson. We honor his life and his legacy. A spiritual giant, he left an indelible imprint upon all who knew him and upon the church that he loved. On Sunday, January 14th, 2018, in the upper room of the Salt Lake Temple, the First Presidency was reorganized in the simple yet sacred pattern established by the Lord. Then, at yesterday morning's solemn assembly, members of the Church throughout the world raised their hands to confirm the earlier action taken by the Apostles. I am humbly grateful for your sustaining support. I also owe much to my forebears. All eight of my great-grandparents were converts to the Church in Europe. Each of these stalwart souls sacrificed everything to come to Zion. During subsequent generations, however, not all my ancestors remained so committed. As a result, I was not raised in a gospel-centered home. I adored my parents. They meant the world to me and taught me crucial lessons. I cannot thank them enough for the happy home life they created for me and my siblings. And yet, even as a boy, I knew I was missing something. One day, I jumped on the streetcar and went to an LDS bookstore to find a book about the Church. I loved learning about the gospel. As I came to understand the word of wisdom, I wanted my parents to live that law. So one day, when I was very young, I went to our basement and smashed on the concrete floor every bottle of liquor. In 1945, while I was in medical school, I married Dancel White in the Salt Lake Temple. She and I were blessed with nine splendid daughters and one precious son. <laughs> El ultimo. Today, our ever-growing family is one of the greatest joys of my life. In 2005, after nearly 60 years of marriage, my dear Dancel was unexpectedly called home. For a season, my grief was almost immobilizing. But the message of Easter and the promise of resurrection sustained me.